This video is a tutorial on how to use CB Designer 2.0. It's short for Cutting Board Designer, which is a program that I made for free for the entire woodworking community to use. I originally made it years ago back in 2008 when I first started making cutting boards and needed a tool that could help me design and visualize how an ingrain cutting board will look like before I even spend the time to glue one together. Before I get started, you should already have some working knowledge of how to build an ingrain cutting board already, or else some of the terms and concepts I'll talk about might be a bit confusing. If you need to know how to build one, there are a ton of videos on the internet for you to watch first. In my opinion, the one made by the Wood Whisperer is the best and most classic video out there. Unfortunately, this version of CB Designer only works on Windows, but keep in mind that this is just one of the many cutting board designer programs out there that people have made already. I know it doesn't allow you to fully customize your cutting boards if you want to add angles or combine panels together, but I think it's one of the easiest ones to use. If you want to check out some web-based ones that do work on both Windows and Mac, I've left some links in the video description below. So that's enough for the intro, let's get started with the tutorial. To download CB Designer, first go to this website, or you can simply Google CB Designer and you'll be the first result. Special thanks to Brad for hosting this program for free on his web server ever since version 1.0. While I'm on the website, I'll add that if you do like the program and if you feel like you got something out of it, you're more than welcome to send a tiny donation my way using this PayPal button over here. And if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine too, I don't mind at all. But thanks to everybody who supported the program over the years. All you have to do now is click the free download button in the top right. Once you download and open the zip file, you'll see all the files that it comes with. It's important to extract all these files to a folder on your computer before you run the exe file. It needs all these DLL files for you to export and print your designs. The PDF file here has detailed instructions on how to use the program as well. Once you open the exe file, you should see this screen. As a note, this program is completely unitless, which means you can use any unit you want as long as you're consistent throughout. It can be centimeters, millimeters, inches, barley corns, leagues, whatever you want. You won't believe how many people just automatically think that this program only works in inches, even though I don't have the word inches anywhere in here. I know that metric is far superior, but I'll just assume inches in this tutorial. You'll start by entering dimensions that correspond to the boards that make up your edge grain or long grain cutting board. Um, as you know, you basically build an edge grain cutting board first, and then you cut it up to make an end grain cutting board. Uh, so that's why we start there. You put those dimensions here, uh, which is based on how big you want your final board to be. Um, in this case, you, you put in your board thickness. In this case, it's uh, one and a half inches, which should be the same for all your strips. Um, your board length, in this case, 19 inches, and your blade curve, um, which is one eighth of an inch here. And yes, the program actually takes into account um, the waste due to your saw blade, which actually does add up depending on how many cuts you make. So now simply click this add layer button up here for as many layers that you have planned. As you can see, the default layer is set at maple with a width of unit one, but I'll show you how to change that later on. As a note, if you're outside the US and depending on your window settings, you might need to use commas instead of decimals if you're getting errors adding your initial layers. Change your wood species by clicking the drop down here. You'll see some stock default ones I put in automatically, but I'll show you later on how to customize this list with your own uh, colors. So now I'll just select some random wood species and widths for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, maybe this one will be cherry, this one will be walnut, um, this one will be cherry, and I don't know, this one will be purple heart. And then just change the uh, wood widths in this column. Click enter on the keyboard to refresh the board on the right. And if it doesn't refresh for whatever reason, just click the refresh button up here. Um, and then I'll change maybe this to 0.75. Um, and then this one will be 1.25. And purple heart will be um, two inches. To make these pictures larger or smaller, just simply click the zoom in button up here to make it larger. Um, and then zoom out to make it smaller. Clicking the Add Layer button up here adds to the end of your list, and the Delete layer deletes the last layer in your list, like so. To add a layer in between two existing layers, simply click this or a corresponding blue arrow in between the two layers you want to add to. For example, if I click this one, you'll see this layer gets inserted here. And to delete a corresponding layer, simply click the red X at the layer you want to delete, like so. To move around a layer, simply click uh, one of your layers. You'll see a rectangle show up around it showing that it's selected, and you can move it up and down using these blue arrows up here. To deselect it, click this button. So after you've done all that, you'll see the final dimensions for your edge grain board here based on the properties that you entered previously. The width is simply the sum of all the different widths that you entered in your list. 
and the materials list down here shows how much of each wood that you need. For example, the maple is added up the several times that you put it here, taking into account the blade curve as well. Keep in mind that this does not take into account the waste uh, that occurs from dimensioning your wood, so your rough stock should obviously be more than this. So you can stop here or you can continue to input an additional property to get to your final end grain cutting board design. Up here is your cross cut width, which is what you want for your end grain cutting board thickness because you rotate these pieces 90 degrees after cross cutting them to expose the end grain. By default it is set to one and a quarter. To flip every other strip like you would normally do, check this checkbox here that says flip every other strip and you'll see it reflected in your final design over here. To get rid of the black borders in both the edge grain board and end grain board, uncheck this box here which gets rid of the black borders. It makes it a little bit more representative of what your board looks like in real life. Here you can see the final dimensions of your end grain cutting board. It calculates how many strips you were able to cut out and even how big the leftover piece is. That way you can adjust your cross cut width to minimize this waste. The width is simply the same as your edge grain cutting board, the thickness is your cross cut width, and the length is simply the original board thickness times the number of strips you're able to cut out. You can also save these pictures if you want. Click these corresponding buttons up here to do that. Export Edge saves your edge grain cutting board to your local computer as a PNG file, like so. You can do the same thing for your end grain cutting board using this button. To save your designs at any point, simply click the Save buttons up here, which work the same way as any other program you've used before. Right now I'll save it to a file called CB. All CB designer cutting board files have an extension CBD. To open a previous design, simply click the Open button up here to open it. Once you have a design you actually want to build, you can print out the design and the instructions to take into your shop. To do that, simply click the Export Print button up here. Type in a file name, here I'll type in CB, and click Save, which will automatically open up a PDF file of it. I will zoom out here so you can see it a little clearer. And here you can see everything from your design. The first thing you'll see is the file name to organize all your different printouts. Here are the main settings that you entered earlier, and here are the final dimensions of your edge grain and end grain cutting boards, as well as pictures of each one. If you scroll down a little further, you see your full layer list, along with the wood species and widths of each one of your wood strips. And then the last thing you'll see is the material list. You could actually customize this entire printout if you don't want to print out one of these elements and settings, which I'll show you later. To open up the program settings menu, click the settings button up here. The box in the top left is where you set your default layer properties if you try to add or insert a new layer. I'll change this cherry with a width of one and a quarter. The next box down is where your PDF settings can be changed in case you don't want to print out a specific table or picture. You can even change the size of the pictures of the cutting boards if you want. It's set to 50% by default. The checkbox here enables a dialog box to show up in case you forget to save your design if you try to close or open up a new file. The list on the right side is where your wood library lives, which dictates the wood species that shows up in the drop down box of your layer list. I included some of the more commonly used woods found in cutting boards. You can delete any one of these woods by clicking the delete button next to it, like so. Or you can clear out the entire list with the clear wood library button here. And if you ever want to bring back the default at any time, click the load default wood library button here. You can change the name or color of any of these woods here, or you can simply add a new wood species yourself. Let's say we want to add Paduk to the library. You can do that by clicking the Add Wood Species here. As you can see, it added a new wood to the end of the list with the default name. Let's change the name to Paduk. And change its color. You can pick any of these colors here, or you can click the Define Custom Colors down here for more custom color. For now, let's just click the red color here. To save your settings, just simply click the Save button down here, and you'll see a quick message showing you that the settings were saved. Click Exit to close the settings box. I'll demonstrate that the settings were saved. First I'll click the Add Layer button up here, and you'll see that cherry with a width of one and a quarter now shows up instead of maple with a width of one. I'll delete those here. 
And if you click any one of these drop down boxes, you'll see that Paduk now shows up. And if I select that, you'll see the color that we selected in our wood library. I'll just change it back. Another cool feature that people seem to like is this randomize button up here. It's useful if you're trying to experiment with the best design for your cutting board with your existing layer list. If you click it, as you can see, it randomly rearranges your layer list. Keep in mind that this does not change any of the wood species or width that you inputted originally. Also, there's no undo button, so you won't be able to go back in case you saw a good one while clicking this button. So that's pretty much it for all the features of CB Designer and how to use it. If you're ever confused by anything, you could always refer to the PDF instruction manual included in the zip file. You can also open it up by clicking the help button in the menu bar. Also feel free to reach out to me if you need anything. I especially like hearing how you use it. I've heard of people using it during their woodworking classes at school or even companies using it with their clients. My email can be found if you click the about button up here. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And with that, happy woodworking and thanks for watching.